since time out of memory, man has been devising ingenious ways and means to protect himself from the discomfort of the elements and the damp, cold ground, particularly in his home. And always his most formidable antagonists have been coldness and the relentless penetration of moisture. So he's long sought to achieve and maintain a comfortable home, warm or cool, as the season dictates, and dry the year round. To this end, man is continually devising and inventing new insulating materials and construction methods, new materials and methods that guarantee to give him his health and his home lifetime protection. Here is a familiar and popular style of residence. It's built of masonry on a concrete slab without basement. Homes of this type are often thought of, even by professionals such as these people, as likely to be uncomfortable, musty, damp, and cold. But this particular home has built-in comfort protection because of a unique insulating material and a different than usual construction. The white material between the outside masonry and the plaster is the insulation. And beneath the floor under the concrete slab is the same material to keep out the cold and dampness from the ground beneath. This is a rigid plastic foam made by expanding polystyrene, the base material, about 40 times. It is commercially known as styrofoam, developed by Dow. Its lightness is at once apparent, indicating how easily it can be handled and used in application. Most people are familiar with its versatility. While primarily an insulating material, it has been used in various other ways. Its lightness, of course, as well as its other properties, are due to its structure of thousands upon thousands of air cells, each of which is sealed off completely from adjoining cells by walls of polystyrene. Because of this cellular structure and the characteristics of the plastic itself, all of the qualities necessary for an insulation for residential masonry construction are combined in one material. As to heat transfer, that is, thermal conductivity, a warm and comfortable home is assured in the winter. Or with air conditioning, a cool and comfortable home is assured in the summer. This has been proved in actual installations, as well as with laboratory tests using ASTM procedures. This test shows the material to be an extremely low conductor of heat. Specifically, its average K factor at 40 degrees is only 0 0.25, which engineers recognize as superior for insulation. Now, while the K factor is a measure of insulation effectiveness, this effectiveness in most materials is violently altered in the presence of water or moisture. Water, of course, not only decreases the effectiveness of insulation, but can freeze and break it or possibly cause mold and decay. In other words, to maintain permanent effectiveness, an insulation must not only resist heat transfer, but be practically waterproof as well. No penetration. Just as white and clean as ever. Just as effective in keeping moisture from getting through. In time, could there be penetration? Experience says no. Severe unbiased tests prove it. Here, samples have been submitted to a 10-foot head of water for 48 hours. After removal of excess surface moisture, accurate weight measurements give the following results. Capillarity, none. Water absorption, nil. Hmm, 
undamaged. That's structural strength, the third basic quality needed for lifetime protection. Surprising, isn't it, in such a featherweight material? But now let's watch exactly how it stands up under lab tests. almost 3,000 pounds per square foot. Here's proof it has strength. Styrofoam has been manufactured in commercial quantities since 1943. Its insulation qualities were early recognized by food processors and cold storage companies, not only for buildings and lockers, but for refrigeration trucks as well, where low temperature transport sometimes involves great distances. A familiar use is in today's large supermarkets. Here, low temperatures must be held without fail for open display of frozen and perishable foods. Also, styrofoam has long been accepted as comfort insulation for masonry buildings such as schools, churches where floors need to be warm, hospitals where constant temperatures must be held, and many other public buildings. See how the advantages of this unusual insulation material pay off in residential construction. These boards are to be used for perimeter insulation of a foundation and slab. There goes approximately a hundred board feet, only about 14 pounds. Now everyone is familiar with perimeter insulation. Its purpose is to maintain comfortable slab temperatures and eliminate excessive heat loss through the foundation. There are two basic methods of using styrofoam around the perimeter, horizontally and vertically. This is the horizontal method, where the boards are laid flat, and a narrow piece is added to insulate the foundation from the slab. Then the slab is poured right over the insulation. In cutaway, horizontal perimeter insulation looks like this. In actual practice, here's how it is done. The fill is leveled to the proper grade. The vapor barrier placed to ensure a dry slab. Then the insulation boards are laid horizontally, butted against the foundation. One layer of boards is used. Thickness and width are determined by climatic conditions. Narrower pieces placed upright insulate the foundation from the slab. and the concrete is poured right over the insulation, sealing in the assurance of permanent moisture resistance and lifetime insulation. The other basic method, vertical application, differs only slightly. Boards are used upright against the foundation and extended well below grade level. When the fill is shoveled back, they're held firmly in place. Vertical perimeter insulation accomplishes the same results as horizontal, keeping the floor warm and dry, not only at the perimeter, but all over. In practice, vertical application is usually done in this manner. Backfill is shoveled in as the boards are placed against the foundation. The insulation extends above the fill to the top of the slab. When the concrete is poured, it makes a seal against any solid masonry path between the slab and foundation. Now, while the horizontal application and the vertical use are the basic methods, some builders and contractors employ combinations or variations of these two basic applications. This foundation has been poured so that the inside surface tapers 
or slants inward toward the top. In applying the insulation, boards are first placed flat against the sloping foundation wall. Next, insulation is applied at the fill level, butted firmly against the upright boards. This home has been designed for heating outlets spaced around the perimeter. With perimeter and slab heating systems, insulation protection such as this is particularly important to avoid high heat loss and resulting high fuel bills. Now, let's look again at this unusual wall construction. It's simply the outside masonry, then the rigid plastic insulation applied to the masonry, and finally, the plaster. The bare wall needs no provision for attaching furring strips because the insulation boards are simply bonded directly onto the masonry and the plaster is applied directly onto the insulation. No other plaster-based materials are quite a saving in time, materials, and labor. Now to see how it's being done in actual practice. Workmen are preparing to apply insulation to these masonry walls. It will go on outside walls throughout the house, serving as a combination insulation and plaster base. The extreme light weight of the material is readily apparent in the ease with which it can be handled. Boards of one inch thickness provide ample insulation for masonry walls anywhere in the United States. A good brick mortar makes a practical adhesive for bonding the insulation to the walls. Here is the easiest way to apply the adhesive. Boards are pushed through this simple device, often called a push box, which lays an even coat of predetermined thickness, usually a quarter of an inch. They are then applied to the wall, butted tightly against adjoining ones, and pressed into place. problem at all is presented with any type of obstruction found on masonry walls. Here, for example, is an outlet box and wiring. Notice that a one and one half inch outlet box, shallower than standard, is used. That's because the finished wall thickness, insulation plus plaster, will be less than with ordinary types of construction, which require furring and plaster lab. is cut and the little piece reinserted to receive the mortar. Then it's removed before the board is applied to the wall. windows and other openings are handled the same. Styrofoam is easily fabricated, much easier than the softest of woods. It cuts readily with any woodworking tool, even a pocket knife. Incidentally, there are no splinters or slivers, and this material doesn't have an odor.
provision for drapery, hardware, and other permanent fixtures can be handled in this manner. Drapery will be attached here. The sliced piece of insulation is mortared to the exterior wall, back into the space from which it was cut. Then a thin wooden block is adhered to the insulation for mounting the drapery hardware. This same method may be used wherever heavy objects are later to be mounted, such as kitchen cabinets and the like. Following standard practice, metal lath and beading is attached around the windows, any outside corners, as well as inside corners, and everything is ready for the plaster. Yes, plaster. That's the next step, for this material is not only an outstanding insulation, but an ideal plaster key as well. Here's why. When styrofoam is made into boards, the cut cells make an ideal bonding surface for both mortar and plaster. In constructing monolithic or solid concrete walls, an excellent method of obtaining the plaster base is by tacking the foam to the inside form during construction. After pouring and removing the forms, the foam adheres to the concrete and is ready for plastering. Sometimes cavity walls are specified, such as for contemporary design, where inside the home a wall will remain as exposed masonry. In such cases, the insulation is inserted while the walls are being built. Whatever the application, whether as perimeter insulation, as an insulation plaster base, or cavity insulation. Styrofoam meets FHA requirements for all climate areas. To the builder, this unique plastic foam offers real economies, both in materials and labor. Light, easy to handle, and easy to work, it saves time as well. No furring strips, no additional plaster-based materials, and no comebacks either. It's there to stay. A home efficiently and permanently insulated. A home planned and built for enjoyable living, which to the owner means so much. Dry, comfortable warmth, true economy in heating, and yes, air conditioning as well. A home with lifetime protection.